Welcome to the Be Kind PA podcast, where members of the Animal Advocates of South Central PA and the surrounding community offer their subjective experiences and opinions on a range of veg topics. Thanks for listening, and we hope you join the conversation. Welcome back to the Be Kind PA podcast, here with Roxy. And this is Joe, and today we're joined by John Beck, Director of Media for the Animal Advocates of South Central PA, and today we'll be talking about the future of me. Want to tell us a little about yourself, John, about how you got involved, what you do, what you're all about? Uh, So, I'm so far as being a part of Animal Advocates, or just like in... Bird's eye view of John Beck. Okay, well, I mean... So I've been meat free for almost 25 years now. That's sick. Yeah, and I was actually an animal activist when I was like eight years old, (laughs) because my cousin was vegetarian, and so I saw what he was doing, and I was like, "Wow, like that's so like powerful, like going out there and doing stuff." So I actually started going to like fur protests and stuff like that, and amazing it's kind of nuts and like um i i went to this one fur protest in uh at the york fair and uh there was this lady yelling at people and i like yelled back at her and i was like whoa like this is crazy and like and this was a kind of like a PETA thing so like there was a lot of PETA people there and they were like really kind of aggressive and i was like uh like I, I understand their passion, but, like, that's too much for me yeah. as a little kid. Like, I was like, whoa, like, yeah. So I kind of got away from that and kind of just did my own little thing for a while. And then Animal Advocates happened, and I was like, this is, like, perfect. It's not aggressive. It's you're learning something, and we're just – it's awesome. So I kind of just was like, yeah, I definitely want to be a part of that, so – So tell us about all the cool tech stuff that you do. Oh, yeah. So I I do a lot of video stuff and sound stuff with my whole life, but um, with animal advocates and stuff like that. So, yeah, I do a lot of video stuff. It's editing. Any promotional materials that you see, John makes those videos. Uh, Check out our YouTube channel. John does that as well. And he has a little thing going on there with the vegan spotlight. Uh, so you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, <clears throat> we just wrapped up our first season. Uh, it's nine episodes, and I'm going to be starting that up again soon. Uh, I sort of took a break so I could focus on when we do uh, tabling events and stuff like that, because editing does take a while. So I like to make sure that I'm like focused on one thing at a time, and then I do uh, a couple other videos here and there, and uh, just kind of splice it together. And Yep, uh, so go check that out. There's a couple very interesting people, uh, a mayor of a local town, a high school student, and then Barb, who's, I don't even know what you would call her, maybe like a lifetime activist. Yeah, yeah, she's, it's it's amazing. She's been doing it for so long. And yeah, I, if you watch the episode, you, she talks about how she's been a nurse forever. And like that's kind of what made her want to like get into being vegan because it's a healthy way to go and she kept seeing these people that are you know constantly getting sick and it was obvious that it was because of like meat consumption and she's like I need to get away from that so yeah and she knows a lot about animal laws and things Mm -hmm. like that oh yeah she's very active with that and trying to get what legislation stuff going yeah so definitely head over to YouTube and check that out thanks for being with us today John Hope Humble Pie is vegan because we are all eating it by hearing your story. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so today we're going to talk about the future of meat consumption. Um, And I think that what normally comes up with this topic is lab-grown meat, as in red meat. I'm not sure if they're doing like lab-grown chicken, but I'm sure it's there. Uh, But as I was browsing the internet, I found an article on digital trends that was called Grubs Up, Lab-Grown Insect Meat Could Be the Future of Food Production. So, I just want to start this conversation off by asking, uh, do you guys think that people that eat meat currently would switch to insect flesh for the good of the planet? Well, I think that this conversation immediately almost segues into the 
do bugs feel pain or is that is can you kill a bug and still be vegan and all that can you swat a fly is that okay then there's a honey thing so i did a little research this morning actually and people the jury's still out on whether or not insects have sentience because people always lump them into these giant groups and apparently within those groups some kind of do most don't some do some don't it depends people don't know yet and then they always have the caveat well if you don't know you should always err on the side of caution and not kill the bugs because there's a chance they may be feeling pain and that's a whole nother topic in general from an advocate's point of view i don't know if i'd want to tell people to eat bugs but if people could had the option to eat bugs and that was all that was available because the world went to such shit that they had to i think they just assume not and instead find different alternatives rather than eat bugs does that make sense yeah so you're framing it uh with sentience so um i wasn't initially framing it that way i'm basically solely talking about it from an environmental perspective just because um, I'm not sure your guys' opinion on how conscious people are about how bad eating meat is for the environment. I'm not sure how many people actually know that, but I think that more people are getting to know that. Um, my research about the sentience of bugs basically was the same as yours, where uh, people are basically saying there are levels of sentience. Uh, so maybe mammals have more sentience and fish have more sentience than bugs, but not explicitly denying the fact that they have sentience. Well, are we giving people a choice with these bugs? Are we giving them a bug burger and a cow's flesh burger and saying you can have one that'll be good for the environment and one that won't be? Because I don't think it's, like you said, I don't think it's on most people's radar or they really care or know about the impact of meat consumption. So I don't think if you gave them the option just told them it's better for the earth eat this bug burger they necessarily do it what do you think john do you think that people would switch uh, just based on an environmental assuming that people know full well that it takes gallons and gallons of water land use all of that stuff to make a burger right um i think it'll be easier for omnivores to do that i think that would i think they would reach out to that more better than I think a vegan would, obviously, because like he said, that, you know, they could be sentient. I mean, I think they are. I mean, not that I was like a cruel, horrible person when I was a kid and was like going around killing insects, but like I've seen it happen where like if an ant loses its leg, it's like flailing around like it's like in pain. It's not like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there has to be some kind of... <laughs> so fun fact about me... When I, uh, when I was still eating animals, I did not kill bugs. So I have always taken bugs out of my house, especially spiders. They're not bugs, they're arachnids. I, I know right, that. Right. Um, but I always carried them outside. And so for me, to, in hindsight, to look back at how silly that was to save the bugs and not the animals that were absolutely sure have sentience, um, that's an interesting perspective as well. I think that may stem from the fact that I think people may be hesitant to eat the bug burgers then because they're around bugs all the time. They know what bugs are. They know how they act. Right, they see right. bugs in their lives. Whereas most people don't see a cow, don't see a chicken, don't see a pig. So when there's a lot harder for them to make connection to their existence and their lives to these animals on their plate. Whereas when you see a bug on the ground or in your house you carry it outside because it's just so commonplace and you know it's part of your life and you're so used to it and you get used to it being a living bugs breathe oh yeah, yeah. breathing organism i don't know if they absorb oxygen through <laughs> their skin no no uh, but another thing too i mean you gotta put into account how much the fda allows bugs to get into food anyway exactly so they're probably already point. eating a lot of bugs in, in the first place so i mean they probably wouldn't even notice a difference really yeah like, well hold on that um because <laughs> i did want to talk about that but um just going back point blank how, how many people do you think uh, omnivores do you think actually are aware of the environmental impacts of meat consumption uh, I don't think very many, or, well, I think maybe now they're starting to catch on to it, but 
I mean, in the past, I don't think they knew or cared at that point, and I think people are starting to know and care, and that's... Yeah, I think it's, like, it's something that came up within the last three years, but generally speaking to people, from my perspective, I don't think that they're fully aware of... No, no, but it's growing, though. It it definitely is, but yeah think they're caring i think they care until it's lunchtime and then all of a sudden it's yeah, yeah there's that too casual conversation around the water cooler and then you go into the break room and eat your lunch and all of a sudden yeah people what are... environmental impact yeah because once it's on your plate you're not thinking about yeah uh, it's with anything like if i eat an apple i don't think about what orchard it came from or right anything like that you're just like oh here's a delicious apple i'm gonna eat it <laughs> right um, so, back to the eating uh, bugs thing. Um, the article makes a great point that most of people in the world already eat bugs regularly. Right. Um, and there's a cricket harvesting company that they talk about. And so it's very North American that we do not eat bugs. Um, you can go to like Hot Topic and at the register they have those like crickets. Right, there's, uh, well, there's, like, the lollipops, too, that have... A bug in them. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. And so, um, the quote, it said that um, the first the first bug is the hardest, is what it said. Okay. Um, but they did acknowledge that you would essentially have to make it a seamless transition. And right. we're kind of having the same conversation with plant-based meats, where the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Burger, they have to be as, you know, fleshy as possible or else it's not going to appeal to the people that they're trying to appeal to, which, in all honesty, is not vegans. So I think that they would have to do the same thing with the bug meat. Yeah. Do you think that's going to be convincing? If they did it that way, where it was fleshy as possible, or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about just that. Just thinking about it is gross to me, but I mean... If they did it that way, I think it'll be easier to convince omnivores to do that. But I don't see it being part of people's everyday lives if cow's flesh is still an option. I see it being a, I dare you to eat this or oh, check yeah, this yeah. out yeah. or kind of a novelty thing that they'll do yeah. once or twice and then they'll forget about it. So with farmed animals, we know that there's kind of a, a level of what you're willing to eat. Do you think that's the same with bugs? Um, so maybe people are... Uh, I saw another article that was saying that they were thinking about making sausages out of maggots and larvae because those are the most harvestable. And so do you think that people would be less or more likely to eat a maggot or larva as opposed to uh, ants or crickets or something like that? In my brain? <laughs> I don't know where this notion is coming from. For some reason, eating crickets seems less gross to me than any maggots. And I have zero basis for that opinion. I don't have experience doing either. If you ask me why I thought that, I'd have no answer. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I mean, either. I, I mean, I think maggots are gross. Like, I don't like them, like, in my trash. <laughs> But, I, but okay, but I think it's a texture thing. So. Yeah, but I see what you're saying. But, yeah, just the thought of that, you know, it's kind of like, ooh, ooh. but I guess if they did it right, like I said, like if they if they found a way to make a maggot taste like a burger, I think people will eat it. Yeah, and, again, they're not targeting it towards vegans. So maybe right. this is a great conversation for us to have because we're already vegan and we're lucky because right, we're not right. even going to yeah. consider eating that. Um, did, do you think anybody would go back to eating animals? Uh, do you think there are any vegans that don't consider the sentience of So I become a, a quote-unquote non-vegan and start eating bug, kind of like um, people who quit smoking and then use a nicotine patch or something, almost yes. like that. Um, like I'd go back to eating animals, but only in the form of insects. I don't think I'd do that because set well because I don't need to because right now life's pretty great I don't feel the need to include that in my life if I really want that there's the impossible whopper which is a whole it came up sorry that's a whole nother <laughs> conversation 
Yeah, it just seems to me like it would be something out of desperation. Like, we have to do that. Like, it's not like we want to do it. But I, I again, I, but I, there will be people that are like, ooh, I'm going to take that challenge and just eat this bug, you know, like this bug burger. I could, there will definitely be people that would, you know, do it just because. But I think it would be more like, oh, like, um, obviously animal agriculture isn't sustainable. So we have to do something else. And they're scared of going vegan because there's... <laughs> Protein deficiency. <laughs> right. There's always those little myths about, you know, veganism and stuff. But, like, I guess they I guess they would feel like they would be getting that protein from the bug. So, I guess I think they would go for that quicker. Yeah, and we should somehow. link the article that I'm uh, pointing to because they actually have charts about the protein levels of, like, crickets versus cattle. Um, and the article also makes a point that... Certain crops can be just as thirsty as cattle, and so it might be more efficient to do the bugs instead of mm. crops. Um, but then it also gives a solution for that, which is vertical farming, uh, which I think it uses. Yeah, that was a weird article. I was reading it, yeah. and then reading about bugs, all of a sudden there's this giant air quote about vertical farming. I was thinking to myself, I thought this was about bugs, but no. And it, they did explain it later, but it was very poorly structured I agree. digital yeah. media people. But it does, it offers a lot of perspectives, and I liked it because it wasn't necessarily bashing. Um, you could say, oh, some crops use more water than cattle, and leave it at that. But they were like, but there's a type of farming that would make it more sustainable. Right. I see bug burgers being a thing only if for some reason this would be a great science fiction concept 100 200 years from now where animal farming is no longer a thing and they banned it and people still need their fleshy fix then maybe if the only option is a bug burger I right think that's like i said it would be like out of desperation yeah. basically but how weird would you feel where you uh, need a burger that bad and yeah. for some reason the impossible burger or beyond burger just doesn't cut it or i mean theoretically by that point we're gonna be much better with the technology and we will have lab grown meat itself um and then we'll have all the ethical conversations around that um we're talking about how we get just all of those <laughs> all of those really funny arguments against veganism and one that I have gotten is well what if you swallow a bug or um, so my caveat to that is I always say my personal belief based on all of the research that I've done is um, anatomically and evolutionarily if humans are meant to eat any beings I believe that we are meant to eat insects I think we ate insects and we ate our ancestors ate insects and fruits and vegetables and other plants. Yeah, well, I mean, look at gorillas. I mean, they're almost all basically vegan, but they do eat they insects. Eat bugs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and we're well, depending on what you believe. I mean, we kind of yeah, of to. course. <laughs> and, but then, oh, but then what about the meat eater who? accidentally swallowed why do we always have to play the gotcha game with yeah vegans? i don't, I don't that's, understand that's always been a thing forever with with you know being I, it's like, like they'll that. say that to you and then you'll be like oh damn it you're right i guess i'll stop being vegan now yeah uh, i'll, I'll, I'll stop point. driving a car and these aren't new questions i mean these things have been asked for as long as i've been meat free like these questions pop up and i'm just like why do you, why is this even an issue? <laughs> right. But my answer takes people back right. because they're like, wait, you would eat a bug? Um, I mean, if I had to, I would I would eat bugs. That's what I would do on a yeah. Desk. Again, out of desperation, it's not like yes. you're like, oh, this looks really tasty. I'm gonna eat this tarantula now, or like I'm gonna eat this roach, or you know, it's no roaches. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. I'd eat a roach before I eat a tarantula. Well, I love spiders. I really do. I think they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, a little different than insects, but I don't think anybody's talking about making a tarantula burger or a, a spider burger. I mean, burger. they're pretty... I I've like you've seen a lot of like documentaries about like tribal people eating them, mm -hmm. and it's, it's 
like it's like a delicacy there. I was gonna say, is there a hierarchy for bug food where tarantulas are the filet mignon? And yeah, I then, think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's they're like all about it. And like maggots are the, what's like the worst of the worst. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's, it's well, really they weird. Well, to make sausages out of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird that we have a hierarchy. Like we don't, as North Americans specifically, even people that eat flesh, they don't. Um, they don't eat bugs right. voluntarily, but they, in their mind, we have a hierarchy and a structure, and we have prejudices towards consuming certain insects that we don't consume. Right. Well, I mean, look at bees. I mean, it's honey is literally vomit <laughs> from a bee, uh, yeah. and it's like people are like, "Oh, it's so delicious." I'm like, even if I like wasn't, it's medicinal. <laughs> Even if I wasn't a vegan or anything, I would not eat honey because the whole concept of eating bee vomit just sounds gross to me. But people don't know that either, just like right. they don't know the environmental right. impacts. What, in terms of environmental impact, what's the difference between an Impossible Burger and, I say it again, Bug Burger or something? Interesting. Because if yeah. in a world where Impossible and Beyond Burgers exist, as long as their environmental impact is not significantly greater than bug burgers why would we need to even have eating insects as an option isn't it funny how there are so many drastic measures and drastic ideas that people are coming up with to get people to stop eating animals yeah like to us it sounds crazy but it might sound completely reasonable for somebody trying to to fix the problem from a different perspective but i agree why wouldn't you just eat a plant burger Right. That is vastly less weird than presenting a, a bug burger to somebody. I, I would hope, generally. I don't, I don't know what's in Impossible and Beyond Burgers. I can't say for sure maybe that what's in them is grosser than bugs. Or what's to say chemicals and add preservatives yeah. and whatnot is okay. Whereas an all-natural maggot sausage... <laughs> They would Three really ingredients. It's a, like the Lara bar of maggot sausages. <laughs> Three ingredients. Maggots, <laughs> um, filler, and yeah, more maggots. Uh, we, I mean, we would, we would have to be, as a society, incredibly environmentally conscious to get here, I think. And then they're also talking about lab, not just raising the bugs, but lab growing them. I think in North America, we're so far away from that, that to ask people to make that choice is so just out there right now that it is not a battle worth fighting, I think. I think just advocating for meatless Mondays or eat less meat Thursdays or something like that, or maybe don't eat cheese with every single meal would be a much more effective argument than trying to convince people to give up meat for insect meat. Right. But I, I again, I, I, I could see it being a fad where, like, someone's, like, challenging somebody to do it. or Like, like the cinnamon challenge. This, just to, like, you know, the gross out factor. But I can't, I, I, again, I agree with you. I don't think it'll be, like, a big, like, monumental situation where we need to, like, do that anytime soon. Because, I don't know, I just... <laughs> Yeah. We have I, so many more fights to fight before right. we get to that. It's, how about we convince people that animals can feel pain first or something yeah. before we convince people to eat bugs? Yeah, and I think that they're already doing so much in the space of lab-grown meat. And then, I don't know if you guys saw that lab-grown dairy stuff. But that I was saw crazy. Something about, I saw something about it, but I didn't really follow up on it. They took one glass of milk and removed the proteins from it and then recreated it. So you could take one, one glass of milk and make a million glasses of milk. Hmm. And so it's um, the first vegan, not plant-based product that's out there is this ice cream. Yeah, that's pretty that's, insane. It sounds like science fiction. Yeah, and I have to read a little bit more into it. But it's, <laughs> it's weird to say vegan, but not made not, out of plants. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the beginning of a science fiction apocalypse horror movie or book <laughs> but back to the bug thing i think vegans already have a weird enough reputation without us going around telling people they should eat bugs that's not going to do the movement any favors i'm pretty sure 
No, I, I and that's not our fight to fight. It would be the scientists that are advocating for this, convincing their fellow omnivores that yeah, this yeah. is better. I agree. I think that's it's going to be them that are going to have to do it because I can't imagine vegans being like, oh yeah, you should eat these bugs now. Like I just I unless it's think... an either or situation. Yeah. I mean, I might advocate for that if. People are only willing to choose between the two. Well, just I, eat a potato. But then that gets in, if the argument is that if that's the argument, we're gonna advocate for eating bugs because impact is less. Why don't you go around telling people to be like the Chick Fil A cow and go eat more chicken uh, because but, that's less. But you just said that it's better to advocate for meatless Monday or eat less meat Thursday, and I think that maybe is the same fight. In context. Well, I'm telling people to just, in general, eat less. You're telling people to eat something else. But the environmental impacts are reduced in any case. I think in the terms of framing the argument, where on one hand you're telling people to just eat this living creature instead of this one, whereas I'm telling people to eat less living creatures. That's true. And let me preface this by saying I have tattoos of bugs. I love bugs. Um, so I, I don't think I would ever have this conversation Again, unless uh, you're going to meet that person that is just, like, so stubborn. And I really feel like there's going to be, like, one guy or person um, that is, like, I am only going to eat this cattle burger or a bug burger because I need to eat. It's my right to eat animals. There's a crazy in every group. And I feel like I'm not going to rule it out if I had to argue in favor of the lesser of two evils even though it doesn't feel good. Yeah, it's like when somebody says, I transitioned to pescatarianism. And then you don't want to say, well, that still stinks because <laughs> fish have feelings. You say yeah. congratulations because that's better than the alternative. Yeah. But it's still, now that I'm reflecting on it, it still feels kind of dirty because you're basically throwing fish under the bus. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe we should have a conversation about that at a later time. Just either way, I don't think anybody's eating bugs anytime soon. Maybe as snacks. <laughs> I could see it as snacks. So far as like you know, like I said, it's gonna be a fad. So I I could see that being yeah. like the push. Maybe. The next like YouTube challenge. Yeah. But yeah, it's never gonna be mainstream because as long as there's the potato chips right next to the bug chips, people may get the bug chips once. Like you said, say, ha, 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 bug chips. Yeah. Who knows if they have uh, these bug burgers and they say 9,000 grams of protein per serving. Like, that's what they're trying to do with the Impossible Burger. They're saying this doesn't kill animals and it has more protein because we know that society is concerned about protein for some reason. Um, and so that's how they market it. That's how they're marketing plant-based stuff is it has more protein than the cattle burger, so why would you eat that? So maybe they're, they will have really good marketing techniques and to convince people. So consensus is no, people will not switch to eating insect flesh in their diet uh, instead of animals uh, for the good of the planet or for, I think we concluded, any reason whatsoever. I agree. I yeah. think. <laughs> That sums up pretty nicely that no one's going to eat these unless you literally hold a gun to their head. Well, thanks for indulging my very weird topic. Now we're going to do a review. Uh, we're doing a review of Hamir's on South George Street. And it's pretty amazing. They have vegan nights uh, once a month, and it's delicious. Yep. So this is in York. It's an Indian fusion restaurant, and they just had a vegan night so it's fresh on my palate and every time I go there I get potato flats which have like a sweet sauce and a spicy sauce yeah it's like a sweet spicy sauce. aren't those basically just french fries they're delicious <laughs> <laughs> yes and no I they're not cut like a regular french fry yeah that's what makes it a flat so it's yeah. like a thin piece of crispy potato yeah, but I see why you would think they're like a French fry because they are similar, but they're like almost like a loaded French fry, but they're flat and they're more like a steak fry, I guess. Yeah, a thin <laughs> steak fry. Really thin. Well, I am notoriously not a foodie, but I do have 
a soft spot for Hamir's because my rule is I don't like going out to eat if it's something I can make at home, which was a lot of vegan food. You can make a bean brio at home. Yep. You can make pasta at home. You can do all that at home instead of going out to eat. But I cannot make Indian food at home. So that's why I like going out there and getting something totally unique and different and just such a change of pace from what I normally eat. And the fact that it's Indian fusion, like he mixes other stuff into the mix. So like he's done Indian tacos. He's done an Alfredo with coconut, like a coconut based. Yeah, Cream he had that this so past, and he also had um, empanadas. Mm-hmm. I don't know what was in them. Oh, I, it I was. I think it was falafel. Yeah, but it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, whatever that sauce he puts on the potato flats was what he put on top of the empanada. It's so delicious. Yeah, and I like um, the Brussels sprouts. I don't know if you had those. Yes, I don't know. Amazing. He like mandolins them, so they're really thin, and then there's a mango sauce that goes on top, and it's incredible. Yeah, it's really good, and. There's also a pizza he does, which is a cauliflower-based uh, uh, crust, and it's really good, too. Yeah, we're pretty lucky because it's the only Indian restaurant in the county. Yeah. So it, Is it? Yeah, it, pretty much. It was a big deal when I first opened up because everyone was sick of driving over to Lancaster every time they wanted Indian food. Uh, you really see like a mix of people in there, too, like from business oh, men, yeah, of families, and mm-hmm. yeah. And for if you work downtown, you can go there for lunch, and they're really quick too. So you can oh, yeah. get in and out of there. Yeah, he's very quick. So check it out uh, again. That's in York on South of George Street. We're looking to get as many people involved in this as possible. So if you want to be a part of it, reach out to us. You can either come over, meet us in person, call in, write us a letter, email, whatever works for you, and get involved any way you can. Thanks for listening, and remember to always. Be Be kind. kind.